So welcome to a new episode of Sit Dip. And this time, as you can see, we're having it in an art gallery. We're going to be talking about art today and we're going to be doing it at the Orisun Art Gallery at Tropic Gallery Abuja. So coming up is a Sip Dip opinion. Share your opinions. What do you think about art? Stay tuned. Yeah, um, <clears throat> my name is Aaron Sorsen. I'm a visual artist. I grew up seeing my dad play with a lot of um, things like his camera, fix his car by himself, make frames and all of that. So sort of, I think I got inspired by seeing my parents. My mom used to make clothes for herself by herself too. I grew up seeing some of these things and they sort of um, sprung me to create. When my dad noticed that um, I was good, I had passion for this. Um, he pushed for me to go in for this, to go and study art. I was like, why, why should I go to art? So, sorry, why, why should I go to school to read art? I remember this day where he took me to my art teacher in school, telling him that um, his son is good. He feels that the son is good in visual art. So I think uh, you should give him some attention. I, I mean, it was awkward for me then, but I felt art wasn't serious enough for you to wake up and say, oh, your child should go to the university and go and study art. I have a lot of artists that um, I admire a lot. My teachers at the university, one is Leeds, who even, who even supervised me at um, the postgraduate level, called um, Kefas Danjuma. There's um, Gani Odutukun, he never taught me. But I love his works. I love this. This other guy, he's, he's, he's a foreigner, he's an American, but he taught in Zaire too at some point. I never met him. But I love his works too, called um, Tyron Jita. So there, there are other young stars, even here. I have a friend called um, Bilimi Munza. He's young, but I can tell you his talent is terrific. I kind of make certain lines and textures when I paint. And I think the knife will be able to give me these textures better than when I use brushes. I like it when I feel like the body of the paint on canvas. The interesting thing about our painting is that um, when you paint, you have certain things in your mind that you are trying to portray. But when viewers come, they're like, oh, this is what I saw. This is so most times I allow them to engage with whatever their intuition tells them. When you encounter my pieces, whatever comes to your mind. But aside that there are contents, there, there, there are messages that um, sometimes I actually push out there that I hope, that I wish that um, people would uh, connect with. I've explored a lot of themes around nationalism, around love, around um, humanity, around uh, certain structures of the society. Like this, talks about um, how I experienced um, COVID last year. You have to look at art like falling in love. Like when you fall in love, your friends, maybe family, or people around you, your partner might, it might not make sense to them. But somehow you have that personal connection with um, that thing, that person you are seeing. If it's formed on the basis of love, on the basis of passion, I think it's going to survive. But if you are just going into it because you flip through the pages of the newspaper and you saw that, oh, a Da Vinci sold or a Van Gogh sold, that's a surprise. And, oh, I should become an artist. Art is the next big thing now. I mean, there are points where you're going to face depression. There are points where you're going to run short of money. So you ask yourself, that thing, this art that you're doing, all of these heartbreaks that you're encountering now, are you still going to do it? If your answer is yes, I mean, you should do it. All 
All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that sip dip opinion segment. Now we're going to get into the real conversations and we have our wonderful guests with us. Thank you, my name is Femi Kroka. I'm a mixed media artist, an innovator, and the manager of Orison Arts Gallery based at the Tropic Galleria, Muhammadu Buhari, with Central Business District, Abuja. Mm -hmm. Mr. Femi just, you know, sold it all. But just in case you're just catching us for the first time, my name is Fatima, and I'm going to be a regular face on Sidip. We also have Sadiq here. I'm a digital artist and an illustrator. Okay, so let's, let's, let's get started. Um, art. What, in your opinion, what is art? Let's start with uh, Sadiq. Not the dictionary definition or My the, own definition. Yeah, the formal definition. For me, art is a form of uh, expressing your imagination. Okay. To the world, to see what you have in mind. Like art, art is a, is a very broad topic that okay. To, for instance, anything can be art and anything can just... We have so many things that you can define, we are, you can even relate with it. So to just see art is just a uh, complementary work. Mm -hmm. It's not, doesn't really do justice. justice art really has a lot of things to do. Like when it comes to music, it's art. Mm -hmm. And um, the way you dress also, is also like. art. And so art is just an uh, expression of the imagination. All right, that makes so a lot of sense. What about you? Jonah, add to that? I think what he said is aptly true. I, I could just add a few words or sentences to what he said because um, art is quite broad, truly. Okay. Really. And um, as a matter of fact, the creative expression of a thought, an idea, an emotion, an experience, put in a form which embellishes that process or or rather creates a pleasure to a viewer or in some way ignites some interest mm -hmm. in an audience is the beauty of art and it could come in any form it could be visual art it could be dramatic performance mm -hmm. it could be spoken word and all of these elements are thrown into the creative process of expression you know ending in so yeah, I think art is like it's like the culmination of the human experience, okay. basically, mm -hmm. and how human beings express themselves. themselves. Yeah. Like you don't have to be creative, you don't have to be ultra, you don't have to be a savant, you don't have to be a protege or prodigy or however you pronounce that word. Yeah. <laughs> in order to um, create art, whether it's music mm -hmm. or it's I, I actually I agree Painting. with you because um, art encompasses all of our humanity. It encapsulates all of our endeavors. There so isn't just anything we do or that is how we artistic. live by that. Mm. that. Art doesn't come in into it. So art is basically life. You're living it every day in, it's, every, it's, in different forms, exactly, basically. Exactly, exactly. You know, it's so, it's so more like an evolution. You keep mm. evolving, you know. So every stage of your life, there's something quite creative about it. It could even be the way you eat or the way you, you, you sit, you know? So there's always a creative aspect to how we do things. It, it just bothers on how we see it or, or how we interpret it. Interpret it. it. Mm. Okay. All right, so how do you feel, or do you feel that art is as much appreciated in Nigeria as it is um, in other countries around the world? Mm. I, Maybe you I, want I think the dynamics bothers on the economics. Because if you look at this part of our own world, we are still grappling with the basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, you know. And frankly, there are two metrics we use. We use the psychographic profile and we use the conventional, you know, <laughs> you all know it anyway. Um, the psychographic metrics is, you, you have a standard where you look at the wants and the needs of your clientele, your customer, and the mm. demographics. It, it, it encompasses just the gender, the income, the sex, and particularly their location. Mm. So if you want to like sell your product, your creative product, you, you consider these two particular profile listing, mm. you know, the psychographic, which caters, which caters to specific needs and interests of your customers, and then the demographics, which is, which is more general, 
So if you look at these two standards, the fact is, in this part of our home world, no matter the kind of art you produce, you have your target market. Even if it's in the millions, you have your target markets, people who are high income net earners. Hmm. They will acquire, they will purchase what you produce. And then you have the people who are in the lower cadre, you know, lower levels, their income is quite, you know, minimum and quite small. So there is, there is art for every class of people. Hmm. Depends on your income, your taste and your preferences. Okay. All right, so um, things are evolving mm -hmm. as, as, as it is. Every day there's something new, there's Absolutely. usually an upgrade. Let's talk about digital art. Um, I know there are some people who are old school and they prefer, you know, hard copy. Yes. Let me see what yeah. I'm buying. Let me feel yes, what let I'm buying. Let me feel it. Absolutely. And, and uh, when we got here, we're having a conversation about how expensive uh digital art we're gonna get to that but let's talk about digital art and the perception in uh, nigeria uh like yeah, we talked about uh, art being appreciated yes. in nigeria mm -hmm. and about okay the thing is in nigeria i feel like artists are not really appreciated as the way they are supposed to like we don't really push our talent mm -hmm. that much and for uh, like comparing to abroad, when you look at Japan, like the, the most popular thing in Japan is their anime, their manga. Artists are being projected, talent is being explored. Mm -hmm. uh, if, in Nigeria, if you try to do something like that, no one will really uh, get, have interest in it. It's it just like, oh, wow, you have a nice work, but you're not going to get support from that. Yeah, no monetary uh, support. So it's just like, oh, you have, this art piece is really nice. Oh. I don't know if I want to get that, but okay. And our government too need to really put a hand in uh, uh, supporting artists and their work because in Nigeria there are a lot of talented individuals out there and they are not being discovered. And if we can have people, prominent people that can really look into that and see what they can really do to, to help these artists, to invest in them, mm. I think we are going to have a lot of artistic work to show the world because we are still in nigeria still has a lot of potential we have a lot of things to show but it's not being explored it's not being explored i find i quite agree but i think i can add to what you just said okay you see there's a huge misconception about hearts and art consumption in nigeria and i think this borders on government policies and the general um lack of orientation about people to, mm. towards art because first a large number of the populace they still see art as a luxury okay and then secondly a lot of people do not see the need for art acquisition mm. tr truly and then i think that borders on the fact that the way the larger number of the population view it and perceive it like they do not see the importance of art to the relevance of art to to their lives what i mean by the art is they do not see it as an integral part of their life something that they could relate to it. relate with in terms of value you know in terms of pleasure too in terms of therapeutic effect on on their lives so that misconception is, is, is something that I feel that through government policies and through, you know, a very fertile, creative ecosystem, such challenges mm. can be met. Mm. Okay, so um, things are evolving every day. There's always something new um, to how things are being done. Mm. Let's talk about digital art. Mm. Um, that is like one of the newest, newest. and um, in thing right now. And before, you know, off camera, we're talking about how expensive, you know, uh, digital art is. And you know how typical Nigerians, we like to see what we're buying. We like to touch. We like to feel. <laughs> we like to hold on to what mm -hmm. we're buying. Um, you are more into digital art, yeah? Yes. Let's, let's, let's tell us about that. What, are, what, are the, what is the perception of digital art in Nigeria? Hmm. I think digital art is becoming very popular here in Nigeria, okay. like with the younger generation. Mm. Mm. And uh, digital art is evolving. 
Uh, to me, I feel like digital art is the future of art. Well, the reason why I say because of the way our technology is evolving. Mm -hmm. So as the technology evolves also, so as art evolves. Yeah. And we, we need to look at what really makes, like you look at the demographic, what they really can relate to it. Mm -hmm. Like you, we talked about uh, demogra the demographic that the target audience, mm -hmm. the kind of art they like, like most times I don't really care to buy an art that I can feel or, or touch. See, or touch. I prefer to own an artwork that I can use as my desktop wallpaper or phone wallpaper or something I can just print and wear. Okay, so that makes sense. You, know, you know, I find quite very interesting. Mm -hmm. I find that quite interesting because, um, you know, currently the trend is digital currency. Yeah. So if we have digital currency, we're going to have digital art. And it, there's going to be a lot of other stimulus, mm -hmm. you know, we're currently Medical science is working on digital medicine. Yeah. You know, so I strongly feel that it is the future of art, like yes. you rightly mm -hmm. pointed out. Mm -hmm. But I also feel that it's going to be a huge challenge to that because in Africa, conventional art mm -hmm. is still very, very popular. Yeah. Yes. And most collectors, they are huge and vast collection, most of. Physical but we have to look at the type of collectors. Like for, <laughs> for me, for instance, I'm a collector. If I want to collect art, I would prefer to collect digital. I, I prefer the conventional art. If I'm collecting, I want to be able to display it on my but you, wall. But you can, uh, but you can also paint the digital too and display on your wall. I, I honestly... Embrace Gen Z. I feel the digital production <laughs> has to do more with you reproducing the piece mm. but the conventional is you just like a sculptural piece like you're doing you, it you're there the real mm. thing. do you get it so the digital art to me <laughs> is more like you running a print version of, of the real the thing. original version but okay <laughs> well, we, well, well we keep forgetting one thing yes. digital art is not just something you just put in a computer and the computer just produce for you you need to put time into making that art yeah. piece there's like, also there's some media in digital art you can yes in a lot because i was going to say i was going to say i think i uh, i think coming from a certain uh point of view mm. i kind of feel like with uh the old school people they would tell you they feel like you know, the conventional art, mm. you you put in a lot more yeah. Even the work and effort. Itself, yeah. But knowing also digitally, it, it's, it's, it has like, you, it's, uh, it's you a lot of mind. You need to understand yes. the software you're working on. Exactly. To so produce it's, it's, a, it's pretty dicey. It has I mean, pros and cons. Exactly. You know, yeah, people. You know, you know what I think, what <laughs> I think is we are always in the process of evolution. Uh -huh. Yes. And I strongly believe that digital art is going to take its rightful place sooner but i'm of the opinion that it is the conventional art that is feeding the digital art process and it is like a continuum mm. and if we have the tangible conventional art form mm -hmm. which is like the hybrid of mm. the digital art okay now the appeal is going to be to those people who are living in this current world of this evolutionary trend that this has more appeal to. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there is no way you can completely separate digital art from conventional from art. Conventional. The only thing that I see is the challenge is the process, the technology involved. Mm. Do you get it? And then the end product itself. Mm. Because some of those digital art you're talking about, they are visual. Okay? You only see them online, you see them on your devices, maybe the laptop, the tablet, you know, the desktop your iPhone, your iPad, and stuff like that. And so, they could also be reproduced and also be hung on the wall. Okay. I'm, I'm coming to that. They, they also could be reproduced and hung on the wall and displayed like the conventional art. Mm -hmm. art. Do you get it? Even 3D art. Yeah. Do you get it? So the point I'm trying to make in essence is this. Digital art is the product of conventional art. I, mean, I, th I think that is that is that 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 yeah. fact has been established because it has to start from somewhere. Yes. And I so like obviously, started from I, the yeah, what you said about evolution is mm -hmm. really like the first 
artist or anyway caveman you see cave cave paintings yes, yes. you know and that kind yes. of the name metamorphosis into into into, before you can now have like yeah. canvases yeah. and have like papyrus scrolls mm -hmm. and but before even that i mean tablets like stone tablets stone, and yeah. stuff yes. so we all kind of started and, and memes, those things are those still appreciated too, the, all those memes we're using now they are aeroglyphic symbols. Oh, the memes. Yeah. Yeah. I call it memes. You know why? No. Me, 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 me. No, I don't know memes. I don't call it memes. I call it me, 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 me. Or the gifts and those yeah, exactly. Yes. the gifts. Exactly. And the thing is, we never stop appreciating Actually, cavemen. Yeah. Or cavemen. We never Actually, stop appreciating yeah. papyrus scrolls mm. or, you know, um, Michelangelo, medieval paintings and stuff. Mm. So I don't think um, conventional or traditional art, art. will ever stop be, being, appreciated. being appreciated. It's just that this is the new... New this thing. is the time of the new age, new you know, age. so yeah. it's just evolutionary. Like, it's just like music. Yeah. yeah. Music evolved. You can't expect someone in this generation to listen to music that is like from 1950s. And but I, I do. No, but I, 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 I love the old school music. I love new school music. So yeah. I kind of feel like it's, it, Whatever it all has to do with good. growth and yeah. yes, and, and um, evolution. And talking about that, um, one other thing that I've noticed with art is an example this piece was done by Mr. A. This piece was done by, by Mr. B. Probably the same time. Mr. A is no longer alive. He or her artwork is more expensive than Mr. B. Do you think people place more value on art when the creator it's has dead. passed on? You see, at the demise of an artist, mm -hmm. his works becomes limited. Ah. And that gives it extra value. Okay. In short, it creates a need. Because this person who might be the originator of this particular stylistic form mm -hmm. is late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, he could have some, he could have produced a generation of acolytes or what, what have you. But the truth is, at his demise, mm -hmm. that his, his works becomes limited. And by the virtue of that, it means that it will become more and more scarce. And you know, the scarce are a product or a commodity. Mm -hmm. More expensive, yeah. Well. So that's the result. Okay. That makes a lot of that's, That makes a lot of uh, sense. sense. Um, talking about digital art now, I'm Sadiq. Um, personally, I, I feel like one of the pros of digital art is not having people copy bringing about roadside sellers. I remember um, some weeks ago, went to shoot and we saw this guy with like a huge painting on the road. And I think I stuck my head out the window and I was like, now nah, you draw him. Yes, I think I we're remember, all, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, she's let's a talk hoodlum, about, that's what she does. <laughs> and let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about digital art and roadside. Roadside sellers. art. Yes. Artists. No, not sellers. roadside artists. The sellers, those who sell. Like, other people's who, art. So basically who, who, who art. plagiarize yes, other people's work. Oh, you mean yes. plagiarize? Yes, because yeah, that is still part of it because it's not their job. They just so basically pirated Pirated, artwork. printing frankly, it out. Frankly, some artists are challenged by art space, mm -hmm. um, being commissioned by a gallery to represent them. Mm -hmm or setting up a proper studio or a gallery by themselves. So mm -hmm. what they do is, because of those challenges, they try to pedal their works on the road or themselves. by roadside oh. or by makeshift, which gives them access to a community of people who might be interested in yeah. their product. So some of them are actually schooled, formally trained mm -hmm. as artists. And some of them are self-trained who are exceptionally gifted. Mm -hmm. and you know, this is how they, they feel they could earn an income, mm -hmm. you know, or even project to, to attain a certain professional career. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some of their works are quite good. Mm -hmm. they, they just don't have that veritable platform, platform. to exhibit and, and, you know, access the clientele or the customer base or mm -hmm. the collector or buyers that they, they feel we pay good value, pay, for it. pay good money, money for, for the it. value. Yeah. Oh, that's just what I think. Okay. And do you think the uh, art idea is being stolen by most of these galleries? Like, because I've heard a story about a street art, an, an artist, a street seller, say street seller, a, a street art artist, artist yes, where his artwork was stolen. Like, 
you see the he he has a very nice art piece, but of course because it's on the roadside, so no one was going to pay attention to it. Yeah. Well, there's this famous artist that saw it and I wow, it is actually a nice art. He just took a picture and went back, recreated, recreated it, it and it became a very big problem. Of course, there's nothing the artist can do can because he doesn't have the power or any support to sue this artist so. so i think that's where the 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 pros of digital Copyright, art right, yeah. comes yeah. comes in right so um talking about digital arts yes um now we have a new form of digital arts nfts so i'm going to let you explain that because i can't <laughs> <laughs> from my own understanding uh, nft is a new form of digital art dis uh, collection and it is it has to do with more of a, you have to use cryptocurrency to acquire a certain kind of art it can be a gift it can be music it can be a two second video well the thing is before you can even talk about nft you need to understand what the nft means yes. it means a non fungible token so that is you can it's irreplaceable you cannot replace any item with it. it has to be one oh, you can't make multiple you can't make copies multiple copies of it so is it like a digital certification of a digital art piece so i did some research <laughs> and someone was actually like downloading an nft okay. but then they they said that the reason why the nft is more valuable is because that like the one they downloaded is downloaded but then the nft has a certain like what's what's the property that makes an nft an nft that a downloaded image of that same nft will not provide because uh like digital content it needs to have a original owner like you can't just claim make claim to a digital artwork it has to come from the real owner of that art piece and it needs to have a certification for that and you have and the art it should not be displayed anywhere else it has to be one and only one and so, so, so i'm so, still confused to, 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 okay to complement what he's it's, saying okay. okay you see digital non-fungible tokens is a, is a form of digital asset mm -hmm. okay and it doesn't just have to do with art it could also be music it could mm -hmm. also be video games mm -hmm. now the same way you need some form of receipt or we call it provenance in art this is like a certificate for or a piece of art that an artist has produced and wants to sell to the buyer. Yeah. It's called provenance. Now, the same way you need a digital certificate for you to acquire certain item. What did you say? Yeah. Certain item. Certain item. Exactly. So it's like proof of ownership that you have acquired the right to this piece and then nobody else has the right to it except you. So if you choose to trade it, and that means you need to trade it with that. Mm. Does that clarify it? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. But you, um, but the thing is, in order, to, you, once you buy a digital NFT item asset, you cannot trade it. You have, because you, you need to you need to have a crypto. You need to use uh, Ethereum to buy, and to, to have your. You have to use Ethereum to acquire that. NFT item. Oh, okay. Just so like basically, Bitcoin, yeah, like it's, it's basically you, you, you need Bitcoin yeah, to buy to a wallet. wallet for it, that. Exactly. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then when we come back, this conversation continues. You're still watching Sydney. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Sip Dip. We are talking arts in all its forms, digital art, um, NFTs, conventional arts. So as an artist or as artists, um, how do you place value on your work, on your pieces? Yeah, there are actually certain metrics that you, you use to evaluate the value of a piece that, that you, you want to um, place a particular monetary value on. First of all is, um, the name of the artist, that means the reputation of the artist, how known is that artist, how known are his works. Then secondly, 
experience also comes in this. If the artist has been, been an artist for over 20, 30 years and is quite visible and his works are in demand, the artist determines how much, he, how much value he wants to place on the work. Mm. Otherwise, if it's a young, boarding artist and he puts a particular price tag, price tag on, tag on, it, on it, a collector, a buyer might determine, de de decides to pay far less than that. Okay. So generally, what determines the piece of any artwork is number one, how visible is that artist? What is the reputation of that artist? What goes into the process? How deep, you know, the creativity that goes into that, that work, mm. you know? It's like saying you want to buy a Lamborghini and then you want to buy a Toyota. You know, one is more exotic than the other. So those are some of the categories that you use to value the piece of the work. How old the, the artist is, how his works are in demand, you know, how visible he is. For instance, let me give you an, an example. If you want to buy um, a Bruce or not Brad Bayer was work because he's been an artist for over 60 years. His works are almost everywhere in some of the top museums in the world. You know, you can't compare a Bruce or not Brad Bayer to a contemporary artist who is just like five years in the industry. Though that artist who is five years in the industry could be very creative, could be very visible. Do you get it? Mm. But the metrics are, is his work in demand? And if his work is such that is weird, is crazy, he has very strong appeal, or, or he addresses a global cause or phenomenon, yes, that could be sensational. But basically, there are three metrics that he used to value and evaluate the price of an artist. How visible he is, what, what his reputations are, mm. if his works are in demand, his works are popular, if he has you know, a, a, a number of collectors, institutions who patronize him, or even if he has a patron who, who is, who's a major, you know, visible force or person in the industry. So those are, those are the criteria that they use. Okay. Um, so let me ask Sadiq uh, this question. Um, how sustainable is this whole arts business, knowing fully well that, you know, people don't consume artwork um, on a daily or as regularly as um, other things? especially digital art. Okay, seeing that art is not uh, a commodity that is consumed regularly, especially here in Nigeria, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people don't, I don't think people understand the value of art. How sustainable is it, income-wise? Income-wise? Yes. Well, uh, when you talk about, you need to understand as a digital, Art creator, I need to understand my target audience, mm -hmm. the demographic, who are the ones that are interested in my work. And th those are the ones I'm going to uh, create content for. And the thing is, you can't just say you're going to just focus on one location for your art to evolve. So I need to know my target audience. Mm -hmm. I, need to, I need to make sure that those who are in demand of my work are the ones I work for. Okay. Like, if you're talking of Nigeria, like art, how art is going to be very sustainable, we are forgetting that we actually demand for more artworks. For example, like, uh, flyers is an art. Mm -hmm. Invitation cards. Okay. Like, when invitation cards, how many uh, weddings do we have in Nigeria? A, a lot. lot. A lot. <laughs> and you cannot expect to just like, like people, you, you don't expect people to like, oh, we don't need any form of art in our yeah. mm -hmm. you can, celebration. You can say to be a graphic artist. You can even say to be a graphic art. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes, that makes yeah. a lot of sense if you put it that hmm. way. Because what I was asking, I was just thinking of, you because know, it's not, conventional yeah, arts, no, like yeah. paintings, uh, sculptures. sculptures. Oh yeah, that was what I was saying. But now yeah. that you put it that way, there it makes also, a lot of sense. There are also several aspects of art that you can consider. You can work with architectural firms to be, architectural firms. To be a draftsman or okay. music. Right. Videos. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Exactly. To design set for them, you know. Yeah. So there are so many other aspects of it that you can earn an income, a sustainable income from, you know. And if you are into um, the visual art sector of, of, of the arts, mm -hmm. you can you can work with theater groups, you know, help them design their fabrics, you know, their mm -hmm. costumes, yes. you know, 
in, you, you, you can even work in in in, in um, um so you can work as an art illustrator you mm -hmm. know, an art an, an animator you know in in an art, art, art agency or an art uh, public relations organization or, 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 or company mm -hmm. especially now that so uh, a lot of 3d animation is in demand in yeah. advertising yeah, yeah, yeah. when you look at our bank ads yeah. always incorporate yeah. um, 3d 3d or even in infographic yeah and you can also work as an art educator be a blogger you know work on the art scene you know you create content for 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 online you know um, companies, mm. you know, you earn an income which is quite sustainable. Okay, so you I, have to I like, be, have I like, to be I like yeah, I like that. Yeah. You know, I have been educated when it comes to being an um, an artist and it being sustainable. Because I honestly did not even think about all the little yeah. little other ways. Yeah. I was just basically thinking about. Say, are you just think about yeah. Yeah. things? Broad and stuff. spectrum of you know, like a web. You, you you can either go into that aspect, come into that aspect. It, it's so broad that you can even multitask and earn multiple income okay. from, 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 from the industry. All right. All right. All right. We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, this conversation continues. Don't forget, we also have hotspots coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sit Dip. We're wrapping up the conversation about art in all its forms. So talking about, I'm gonna take us back to what we were saying about plagiarization mm -hmm. and um, other people, you know, basically pirating artwork. So what do you feel about the copyright laws in Nigeria? Like as regards to protecting artists, do you think it's strong? Have you had an encounter? Yeah, I, I, I think Nigeria has a very strong copyright law or laws, but the challenge is in its enforcement. You know, if you look at the creative industry generally, if you look at movie production and music production, mm -hmm. there have been a lot of sensational cases about, you know, pirates, you know, infringing on the, you know, creative rights of, of, of the, 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 the producers or the originator of, you know, a creative piece. And you realize that the law is quite lax, you know, in enforcing, you know, that, that these, these rights are protected or, or that, um, Penalties are melted out to the offenders, and rewards, you know, are, are given to to um, the the um, originator of such creative works. And we have a case in in, the, in this gallery, Orison Art Gallery, where I'm also manager, mm -hmm. and we have people come in and they like to take pictures of creative creative works on exhibition. And some of them, when they do so, they do not give acknowledgement to the artist whose work is on display. Sometimes they even try to block out the name of the uh, artist which, which, which is which is quite unfortunate because if you take out the right of or the or, the right of the originator of the work mm -hmm. how, how how does he earn an income then how do you protect his right do you know, how, do, how does he even get acknowledgement for that creative work you know it's just like it's just like you working for something and somebody earning an income from it Offer that's it. quite unjust that's an injustice so i i strongly feel that the area that I think the artists can be protected or the creatives can be protected is when there's a law and there's an enforcement of that law. It means even the artist will be willing to pay his taxes. The artist will be willing, you know, to be even will be stimulated to be more creative. But when an artist is deprived of his, you know, due earnings, you know, and then the artist will not only be disillusioned, but also will be shortchanged, you know, because rightfully an artist is supposed to earn an income from his oh, creative works. Mm -hmm. you know? So what I feel strongly is the government needs to do more in enforcing these laws, you know, to protect the copyright of artists, you know, and also to ensure that pirates are punished heavily, you know, so, so that that will serve as a deterrent to others. So did you mm. add something to that? Yes. Okay. But I feel like the worst part of this art plagiarism is like the problem digital artists face most of the time is plagiarism. That's why digital art content is okay. easily plagiarized and it's very hard to tackle this issue. Especially if you look at places like China, for mm -hmm. example, where there's no copyright law. Really? That explains a lot. Hmm. <laughs> you can, like, you can have 
your artwork display out there and someone like say that, oh, there's a nice space. I will just print it out and put it on your product and sell it. Even if you try to call out that person, there's nothing that you can do that can be done. Unless if he's living in a country where copyright law is dealt with. And that's why most um, most uh, media houses, when they want to, when they see an artwork, like recently, one of my artwork of Queen Amina mm -hmm. was I licensed it to um, Daily Show, okay. Trevor Noah Daily Show. Oh, wow! Hey. How far? When are we sharing the money? <laughs> <laughs> um, soon <laughs> after the interview. Okay. 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 Uh, so they had to contact me directly because they had to like. There's a and the thing is. Where I store my art is also important. Where you put your artwork is very important. Like Thank the you. website you put your artwork. So they found me through that website and then contacted me through my email. They want to seek my approval to allow them to use my work in their in one of their shows. Yes. So of course of course they paid. Do you mind me asking? Of course. You know, like, I'm so curious yeah. about the journalists artists. are doing art now. <laughs> uh, do you want to give us like an you don't have to give us a so here's the thing what i'm asking it will encourage somebody else you know okay. just you don't have to give us the exact give us a ballpark just figure. give a us range. like a you know a range, a range. you could say okay. between like uh five hundred thousand to you one say million three figures yeah. <laughs> four <laughs> figures uh-huh mm. all i can say is this is not bad <laughs> Okay, not sad. <laughs> it's, not bad. It, 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 it's, it's classified. Okay, okay. I right, no problem. We'll, dis I think we'll declassify it later. Uh-uh, Mr. Femi. That's all I think, because he has refused Don't. to disclose. <laughs> this will give us a clue of how much he could possibly have earned. So, you must have said you will see share that money. We'll talk about it. We'll declassify later. When, when, when. Like, this is the question I always get from people. I mean, what do you mean? Oh, wow. It might inspire me to want to go into art. Yeah, like this, this is why digital art is very, very good. Like it's more <laughs> I'm flexible. I'm trying to rethink the whole digital art thing. Yeah, now. it it has more opportunity. Like the opportunities in digital content mm. is wider, wider than visibility. Yeah, visibility. You get discovered easily. Yeah, mm. because you don't have to carry, carry the yeah. no. canvas around. All right, there you go. <laughs> and I think it's important because you know the Daily Show is. A I foreign mean, show, so they'll respect they'll the respect protocol. The protocol. Because, yes. like, you know, I'm not saying you know, we I'm don't respect protocol. I'm still curious here, about how much we're going to talk about that after. Hello. Well, you know, <laughs> digital art. I said she was a well, well, But you know, digital art depends largely on cryptocurrency. Well, mine wasn't no, no, depending on the His crypto. Here's raw cash. No, I think I'm okay. That's okay. That's next. That's next. That's next. Can we? Can we restrain? Okay. It's not encouraged so funny. It's not it's not in Naira, so that is the only hey, Of course yeah. it wouldn't be. We'll talk later. <laughs> There's but a difference between crypto art, that mm -hmm. is NFT, NFT and digital, digital art. art. Okay. okay. There are two different things. Uh -huh. So in NFT you can choose to sell like basically anything and someone with a lot of crypto wallet will just buy it and that's okay. it. Okay. I, some sometimes those uh, an NFT artwork doesn't really have much um, value. Val no, yeah, it has value because they are buying it in a very high amount. But you don't really see the value of the art itself. It doesn't make sense. That's true. You just see something that is just yeah. so random, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna just buy this. I just feel like this NFT is more like uh, the rich enriching themselves even more. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because uh, it doesn't make it. Doesn't it doesn't make it. Make it's not open to everyone. It's not open to, and it's exclusive. It's not open to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. With, with, when we searched for NFTs and how expensive, it did not make any sense to it me. Not make any I'm sense. sorry, maybe I'm local, but. No, you're not local. <laughs> it don't make no sense. Mm. It's nah. quite exclusive. There's a lot of exclusivity to it. Yes. You, know, you need to belong to a, a certain class, and then you also need to, you know, have, you mm. know, a cryptocurrency. Um, um, what's it called now? Uh, that is, you, need to, you need to have, you need to buy a, um, ETH. And, uh, ETH. Oh, exactly. So I'll just stick to the not digital Bitcoin. and conventional ETH, ETH is the only currency you can used buy. buy. You uh, can use to buy an NFT. NFT. Okay. Oh, wow. And I feel like for you to even 
value, like to place value, that much value on something so yeah. obscure, on your you have to have a lot of yeah. money. So. so basically, it's luck. You have to have an acquired taste. Yeah, you and certainly have to. Because that, it, it don't, it make, don't make no sense. But, you know, artists still has to do it some, some form of sophistication. But do I, what, yeah. what uh, I do feel like it's also, what is happening with NFT is similar, it's also happening in the real world, with art. You can go to uh, some art galleries and see an artwork that doesn't really make much sense. Mm -hmm. But it's, but it's so pricey. It's so pricey. So bottom line, have money. All right. That is what it Great. is. Thank you so much. <laughs> this conversation has been really enlightening yeah. and very, very um, educating and interesting at the same time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, coming up next is uh, Hotspot. If you're trying to figure out the, some of the best place to go chill, have fun, uh, take your loved one, or basically just go spend some money and time, check out Hotspots. Hi guys, what's up and welcome to Hot Spot. Today I am at Orison Art Source, yes. And on a normal day you see me, you know, eating here and there, eating all sorts of food. But today I am eating something for my heart, which is artwork actually. So um, I would have an art creator take me around the beautiful pieces they have here at the gallery. And you know, basically show me the art that reflects you know what the artist was thinking of at that moment i really don't know but it's going to be a fun experience for me i hope it's going to be a fun experience for you too so i'll see you guys inside hi hello my name is sandra my name is femi and i'm curator manager of orison hearts gallery oh, nice, nice. orison means the source okay it's actually a word in yoruba and the meaning in english is the source, the source of creativity, the source of life, and the source of existence. That's the meaning of Orison. It's usually like, you know, a river must have a source. So when you say source, it means where the river originates from, the flow of water, the stream where it originates from. That's what Orison means. Oh, yeah. So what type of art do you have here in the gallery? We have a plethora of hearts cutting across all forms of art. We have bronze, we have brass, we have wood sculpture, we have textile art, we have oil on canvas, we have acrylic on canvas. You know, we have all forms of art forms in our art gallery. So it shows you how eclectic an artist is, you know, in his approach. You know, it could go from ruralistic image, you know, to urban, you know, to cosmopolitan, you know, to traditional, you know. There are a lot of specific works that stand out. For instance, this piece is by Tola Wewe. Tola, Tola Wewe. Tola Wewe is nicknamed the African Picasso because of his prodigious works. You know? And he's actually very passionate about, you know, telling the African cultural experience. Okay. And, you know, one unique thing about Tola Wewe is most of his works, you know, reflect what I can simply say, you being, you know, the protagonist of your own narrative you know in most of his work you find elements you know of, of our cultural relics you know symbols of our 
cultural heritage. And sometimes you also find futuristic images, you know, that reflect, you know, how passionate he is about, you know, who we are as a people. What is value of artwork? Here, here the, the value of artworks actually depends on the creativity behind the artwork okay. and the name of the artist. If the artist is a veteran artist, a renowned artist that's been an artist for decades, mm -hmm. you know, the value that is placed on such a work reflects, you know, how who that artist is, the, the expertise, the creativity that goes into the production of that work. So it's like saying, you want to buy a piece of artwork that is produced by a master, you know, who's been in the industry for decades. The value can be compared to the, 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 the value of a young artist yes. who, who's just, you know, five or 10 years in the industry. So usually the value of art has to do with the creativity of the piece itself, okay. you know, and also the experience, the expertise that goes into the production of, of the work. And sometimes when the work is quite Asian, like it's antiquated, the value is really, really high because of the years that it, 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 has, it has been in existence, yeah. you know. So those are some of the, you know, metrics that is used to measure, you know, how a work of art is, okay, you know, so valued. Talk, so talking about masters, yeah, well, what is the oldest piece here that's coming right now? The oldest piece is actually an antique. Mm. Yes, though we have a collection of a number of masters, you know, from Oshobo School to the Zaria Rebel School, you know, to Unsuka School. Okay. We're going to go on tour. Are, I'm going to take you around all some right, of, some of right, them. Right. Their, their works are quite pricey, okay. you know, given, given their years of practice, you know, their dedication to their craft in the industry, you know. So that, that's some of the ways, you know, that you measure, you know, the value of, of, of a hat piece. So this is by Stephanie Onachuku. She's a female artist. And she's very passionate about using pen and ink on, mm. on paper, you know. So this is pen and ink? Yes, pen and ink on paper. You know, if you, if you move closer, you see, you know, how she's been able to, you know, depict, you know, a lot of images in this yeah, piece. Yes, you know, and it's quite so deep and complex because you can also see, you know, images. You can see spectrum of colors and it, you know, it's quite an engaging piece, you know, shows the depth of our creativity. Mm. It's actually a series. It's like, this is the first, this is the second, this is the third. It, this is, the title of this is called Mulan. It's actually a fictitious It's called what? Mulan. Mulan. Yeah, it's a fictitious character. It's actually like saying we celebrate heroine, we celebrate human characters, yeah, you know, yeah. human superheroes, you know, so it's a tribute to the, you know, the uniqueness of you know, womanhood, their roles, their importance, you know, in contributing to, you know, development, to civilization, you know. So this is actually a series. This is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one. And this is actually beautiful. I can't yeah. believe she used pen, pen and ink. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's pen and ink. This is called a boogeyman. And, boogeyman. This, and this is called Beautiful Fool. Mm. Yeah, that's the title. It's quite a catchy title. Yes, it is, yes. So, um, it's the same Tola where we're... Yeah, yeah. yes. And so, so guys yeah, his works are quite deep, very colorful and vibrant, and he likes to use, you know, a lot of um, pen and ink on acrylic too. On acrylic? Yes, like, like this piece is pen and ink and acrylic on canvas, you know. And this particular piece is very unique because you, you can see like two, three faces merging into each other, and it's actually a celebration of womanhood. You know, the role of women in the society, how they contribute to the development of the society, how they add value, you know, to, to the society. So, so these are traditional drums. And these drums actually, you know how important drums are in the African community? Yes. You know, drums are, you know, things that are created to transmit information, to transmit messages, and also to create rhythm melody and music and you see the, the drum is very important in African community because there's no event that we, we want to commemorate or celebrate that the drums are not brought out you know to perform particularly they have some very special drums that when a crown is being when the king is being crowned or when there's a coronation for a new king these special drums are brought out you know to, to perform you know 
the new coronation. And the unique thing about our drums is that on our drums, we tell the story of a community, of a people. As you can see images on this drum. And these drums are very special drums because they are like, they depict the history and the culture of a people, the life of a community. Can I touch it? Yes, you can. Okay, I thought it was like... On this side, it is called, we have six different sections under the gallery. And on this side, is this side is called the metal junkyard. Junkyard. And on this side, you can see that all these metal works are made up of scrap metals. You can see that they are made up of spoons, utensils, generator tank, you know, door inches, part of, yeah, part of, part of nuts and bolts, you know, all put together to make this, you know, magnificent piece. So this is, uh... this is the head of the buffalo. Yeah. Made, with metal. Made, made of metal and that's also the head of a horse made of metal too and this is the quarter of, of a horse oh. yes made of the same metal scraps the artist is called Eraruji David he's a contemporary artist Eraruji David, David. He's, the same he's the same person who made most here okay, most of yes them. not all and right behind you is a really magnificent monument you know a life-size crocodile and this life-size crocodile measures 11 feet in length and this is made up of bronze and it is very old too yes. well actually I do not have the actual age of the crocodile but I can give you a forecast a forecast of between um, 500 to 800 years Yes, some, some antiquated pieces are even older than that. Mm. 500 to 800 years. Yes. Images. I call them mythical images because they have come to, you know, symbolize some of the way we think and some of the way, you know, we also engage and interact among the southwest western people of Nigeria. This is called Moremi. Moremi, yeah. Kwe Moremi. And this is Odudua. Odudua. Yeah, they are made up of bronze. And they are actually very symbolic figures in our history yeah. as a people. I know and, I've heard of Oduduwa. Yeah, Amora. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they are quite outstanding in, in, in their ways too, and their accomplishment, and what they symbolize and what they represent. Lovely. So we have, you know, plaques, plaques from, you know, the Bini Kingdom. You know, Bini. yeah. You know, Bini. Oh, Bini is known. Bini. Bini is known for um, a tradition of bronze work. Yeah, yeah. So they are famous all over the world for that tradition. Mm -hmm. And you can see that this reflects the traditional hunter, you know, killing a white boar. Yeah. You know, this is even more dangerous than the domesticated pig, you mm -hmm. know, because it uses its, you know, its mouth to uproot the trunks. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, this is a traditional hunter, you know, hunting down a boa. And if you, you see, this work is quite exquisite because it, it's one of our, you know, antiquated piece too. Okay, and it's made with... It's bronze. made of bronze, yes. And you can see that it is really detailed yeah. and the finishing is quite impressive, you know. And it is very old too. Like how old? I, I, I really would just give you an educated guess of between... 500 to 1,000 years because bronze, bronze, bronze are made to last for, forever, forever, just like iron. So um, these are miniature. Still from Benin. No, these are not from Benin, but those are th those plaques are from Benin. Okay. So these are miniature, you know, wood sculptures from Oshogbo mainly. Yes, mainly Oshobo because they, they reflect, you know, the tradition of the community, the belief system of the community, you know, and the consciousness of the community, you know. This, this is actually the shell of a tortoise. Of a tortoise. Like, is this real? Yeah, it is real. It's actually, it was brought from Cape Verde. Ooh. Yeah. Can I, I can touch it? Yes, and this, you know, the, the shell of a tortoise gets bigger as they age older. So this has been... This is, this is, yes, it, it has grown to the level where, you know, it can't grow any longer. 
Well, just to be clear, when it got here, it was small. No, no, no. no. Okay. I mean, when when the tortoise is alive. Okay, when tortoise is you know, alive. Exactly. Okay. That's what it means. So you know, it, it, when a tortoise is growing, the older it gets, the bigger the shell gets. Yes. So yes. when it gets to a certain stage, because some tortoise can live as long as a hundred years. Mm -hmm. So the, the older it's getting, the bigger the shell also will be getting. And you can see this is quite massive. Yes, it's, it's, uh... it's quite massive. So this piece is also made by Tundi Odunladi that I was telling you about. Yeah, but this has to do with promoting nationhood, nationalism. Yes, because it means together we build a, a nation. Now, if you look right in the middle of it, this is the Nigerian flag, flag the green, okay. white, green, that is supposed to uh, engender all of us to be patriotic and passionate. And you can see images of people right in the middle of it, in unity, like, like bonding together, trying to lift up, you know, the consciousness of building a nation together. So this is more like, you know, the family unit, the father, the mother, and the children working together collectively towards one goal, towards one purpose, you know. So that's the idea behind it. So and this was made with textile, textile yeah, yeah and, beads. and beads, yes. Mm. Because you see, textile is very, very important in our communities. It's more like saying it's the fabric that we wear. Because you see, in a, in a Yoruba um, in a Yoruba proverb, there's a saying that people are the fabric you wear. It means that in your lash or me, you know, because it is, it is not about the clothes you are wearing, it's about the people around you, people who, are, who, who help you to build your vision, who help you to achieve your purpose in life. So no man is an island. We all need to work together as a people who believe in the same course in life so that we'll be able to achieve a common destiny. You know, that's the reason behind this art piece. And the use of the textile, you know, and the beats together is to show, you know, how people can work together in, in spite of their diversity, yeah, you know, yeah. in, in spite of their differences. We all can come together and meet at the table and forge, you know, you know, a common interest and achieve the same purpose that will drive harmony and unity and development and peace. Okay. This okay. is called Doba. The title of it is Doba. But it's not actually called Doba. I was just pulling your legs. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually trumpets and drums. It's by one of the most gifted contemporary artists. His name is Oswald Oroakwa. If you want to know, if you want to know the name of any artist, just come to the right side of the artwork. Okay. You see the, you see the, Sometimes they sign their name. Sometimes they write their name. And the year it was produced. Two thousand and nine. Yes. So this piece is actually titled "Trumpets and Drums," and it's actually to commemorate the unique you know, festival that the northern part of Nigeria is known for, the Doba Festival. So one particular, um, oh, so Sokoto, is it from Sokoto? It's actually or? celebrated in Kano, in Kaduna, in Bono, in Sokoto, primarily in the northern part of Nigeria. Okay. It's, like, it's, like, it's like a general festival for all of the, the, the northern, northern part. part of Nigeria. And you know, it's quite an interesting and engaging festival for them because, you know, it's like saying, Everybody come out and have a great time on this great occasion. And dressing. And dressing you, exactly. And, you know, it's usually an event where music is created, you know, uh, you know, fun fair is created, you know, for everyone to enjoy their, 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 their themselves. And usually the horses that the riders also ride on, mm -hmm. they are beautifully adorned. Yes, yes, you know. yes. I think I see that one. Yeah. What is this made? Well, it's actually acrylic on canvas. Okay. Yes. So if I say I didn't enjoy myself, I must be lying because I saw beautiful pieces, you know, in this art gallery. I saw pieces from Ike, I saw pieces from Tijani. And even Susan Wenga, which is beautiful, of course. I saw, you know, different materials they used in making these, some textile beads, even uh, wool, you know, what you use to knit clothes. I saw them. And trust me, I was 
I was amazed, I was perplexed actually, because I didn't believe you could use these pieces to actually create something magical. I would call that magical because I can't do that, and for someone to do that, it was really magical. And yeah, for my first experience at an art gallery, I would say my experience was awesome. It was beautiful and I would definitely come over and over again and I would even go to other art places, you know, to experience such beauty. So until next time, same station, same time. My name is Cassie and I'll see you guys later.